Good afternoon, everyone, and I would like to thank you for joining us today for our live online session, where our focus for today's presentation is on the newly launched Visual Studio 2017. Uh, we'll be, we will be looking at new features, including VS for Mac, uh, new features of DevOps, and uh, a bit of the latest update of TFS 2017. I introduce quickly our speakers for this afternoon. Giles is a developer technology specialist uh, from Microsoft. So he is a technical specialist and part of a Microsoft UK Visual Studio team. Giles joined Microsoft back in 2008 and started his development career with the Microsoft technologies in the days of client server and client server applications before becoming an early adapter for Java. His key interest is on the full ALM and DevOps tooling using VSTS and um, also TFS. And he's a regular speaker at both Microsoft and partner events. The next speaker is uh, resident uh, test house uh, consultant, Mohammed Radwan. He is our Visual Studio MVP and DevOps practice lead. He's focused on providing solutions for various roles involved in software development and, de and delivery of Microsoft Visual Studio ALM, DevOps tools, and technologies. He excels in software practices and automation with, uh, with 15 years plus of professional experience, spanning different stages and phase of software development life, life cycle. Like Jaws, he too is a regular speaker at technology events and user groups. I'll quickly go through the agenda. So it's a quick agenda today. Oh, hold on. Hold. Let's go for the housekeeping for a minute. So for today, uh, it's only a listen-only mode. So as on, as on your screen, if you need to ask questions, please do click on the question button under the presentation window. Agenda today, Giles will start, start it off with us with the Visual Studio update. And after that, Charles will do a bit of a Visual Studio Mac, and he will do a brief demo for it. And after that, Visual Studio Code will be done by my colleague Mohammed. Some new features of DevOps and also a bit of uh, cloud development. We'll go through the latest updates of uh, TFS 2017 Update 1. And at the end, there will be a Q&A session. So without further delay, I now pass you over to my colleague, Giles. Thank you, Mel. Uh, so hi, everyone. And uh, first of all, thanks to Test House for putting this together. So I'm very uh, uh, happy to, to join this webinar. Um, I've got a few slides, but uh, mainly I want to demo. Uh, but again, just, just to um, sort of reiterate from uh, Mel's introduction, so I work in the Visual Studio team in the UK, uh, and I cover the Visual Studio family of tools. And I thought a, um, a reasonable place perhaps to start is just to make sure everyone's aware of our overall strategy, uh, which is this, which is to support essentially any developer writing any app on any platform. So it's a very broad goal. Um, doesn't necessarily mean we've got there, um, but that is the intent of what we're trying to do with the Visual Studio family of tools. Um, and, uh, and so I thought what would be useful is a quick recap. Um, if we look at sort of the uh, the family of tools as as is, if you like, um, or certainly before Visual Studio 2017. Uh, and so what we're looking at is Visual Studio, the IDE, which we'll come on to shortly. Uh, Visual Studio Code, which I think Mo is going to take a look at later on, so I'm not going to try and steal his thunder there, uh, but as our cross-platform um, code editor, which is, uh, I think, being used by well over a million uh, active users now. Um, and then on the back end, either Visual Studio Team Services or Team Foundation Server providing the sort of agile ALM and DevOps capabilities. Uh, and all of this, um, not only, but, uh, but, but certainly uh, with a lot of support for uh, Microsoft Azure, the cloud platform. So that's kind of the uh, the, the pre-2017 position. So what I wanted to talk about is, is what are the, the changes here, both in the lineup and, and the details. Um, and so the first one that um, I wanted to talk about briefly is Visual Studio for Mac uh, and introduce this. This is still in preview. I think it's on uh, preview four. Uh, and I'll give you a quick demo in a second. But the uh, the key parts to this really um, are that if you've got a, a Visual Studio subscription, i.e. what used to be called an MSDN subscription, um, you'll get access to Visual Studio for Mac at, at no additional cost. Um, there will be um, a, a community edition. 
Um, and at the moment, you can go and just download this for free anyway. It's in, in preview, so you can just go and get hold of it. Um, and so what I want to do is let's go and take a, let's have a look at our first little demo, and I want to show you this to you. So I'm going to uh, start sharing my desktop. So I'm just going to start that, and hopefully that will come through uh, shortly. Um, while it's just loading up, what I wanted to, um, one of the things I just wanted to uh, really make clear as well, uh, is that the uh, Visual Studio for Mac is not a port of the Visual Studio IDE that are used to on Windows. So it's not Visual Studio for Windows ported to the Mac. Um, this is an evolution of the Xamarin Studio uh, tooling that, that came with our Xamarin acquisition. Um, and so it's not directly equivalent to something like Visual Studio Professional. Um, it, it, is, it is slightly different. Um, um, so uh, what I uh, what I want to do is just give you a quick intro. Um, you can see I fire, fired up uh, Visual Studio for Mac here. It's in preview. Um, let's just full screen it so we can see it a little bit clearer. Um, and what I'm going to do is just dive in and go into the new project screen, uh, and we'll see what we can uh, what we can see there. So you'll see that there are a number of project types that support creating uh, mobile applications, as you'd expect with this coming from Xamarin uh, originally, the Xamarin Studio. So we can support sort of iOS native development using C Sharp, uh, Android development, and there are also multi-platform apps. Uh, sorry, templates. Um, so you can come in here and say, well, actually, I'd like to create a uh, a forms, a Xamarin Forms app that is therefore native uh, apps on iOS, Android, Windows using C Sharp, uh, and there's a template to help you start doing that. In fact, F Sharp is also supported, so you can see you can choose between C Sharp and F Sharp. There are some interesting ones as well, things like the uh, connected app um, on the the forms. Uh, and so what this does is a template that creates a Xamarin front end with an ASP.NET Core mobile services backend. So quite a nice sort of multi-tier application in a single template. But what I wanted to show you very quickly was not only, uh, and this is one of the differences now with Visual Studio for Mac as opposed to the older Xamarin Studio, is that this has got support for .NET Core, um, but also uh, other templates. So for example, I can come in and create an ASP.NET MVC project. So if I come in uh, and I create a you know, choose my options. Do I want to create a web API or an MVC app? Uh, do I want to include unit tests? I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, and let's say that this is my test house uh, demo. Uh, I'll keep the project name solution say, name the same. Choose where to locate it. And do I want to stick this into version control? Um, Visual Studio for Mac has uh, Git integration out of the box. So let's go and create that project. So uh, although you'll see, obviously, it's not the same UI, it's very similar. Um, and uh, what we're now going through is really a very similar experience to, to Visual Studio on Windows. So I've it's scaffolded up the project. Um, now I need to go and accept the um, the, the packages going to be brought in with NuGet. So I can accept, the, the in this case, the various Microsoft ASP packages. Um, and you can see that um, we've also got, um, here we've got uh, unnecessary usings uh, being picked up. So same sort of experience. Um, if I'm working inside the, the C Sharp editor, uh, then you know if I come in and we start to type, uh, I'm getting IntelliSense. So I've got sort of you know, I can go to system environment, you know, dot whatever. And maybe I want to look at the OS or something. Um, so it's a very similar experience here. You can see you've got the red squigglies, you've got IntelliSense. Um, we're working essentially in the same way, uh, and you've got different views. They're called something slightly different here, which are pads. So you can go and open up different pads uh, inside here. But uh, but we can see uh, I can run unit tests. Um, so these are the same. Uh, unit test frameworks, and in fact, we've just open sourced MS Test um, so that it's both more uh, uniform, uh, but also it's cross-platform. Uh, and so this is available within the environment as well. Uh, there are toolboxes. You can drag and drop components and things on there. Uh, and should I want to run this, um, let's go and stick a breakpoint in, and I'm just going to uh, run. Um, sorry, I just opened it up on a different mach uh, machine. Let me just move this over. Just waiting for that to load, and I'll uh, move it over slightly. Right. 
persuade you of that to load anyway. But um, sorry, my browser's doing something weird on the Mac there. But um, that that will fire up. Um, you can step into this debug. You can see you've got breakpoints. You can watch your locals. Um, this is a very similar experience essentially to working in in Visual Studio. Um, so you can you can work with this uh, uh, really in a very familiar way. Um, and you've got a good C sharp editor with your standard unit tests. Um, breakpoints, debugging, all of that kind of capability sitting inside there. So definitely have a look at that, be aware of it, um, and it's something that you can um, you can get access to and look at the preview. Uh, as I say, in here, I think I'm on preview uh, four at the moment. There may be another update. Let's just go in here, actually. Um, so I can see we, I'm on preview four, but I think there is another one available now. Um, so you can keep up to date with that, have a play around with it if you're interested, uh, and just generally be aware that that's part of what we're offering now. So I'm going to come out of that one. Uh, we'll go back to the slides briefly. Um, so let's go back in in here, uh, and let's look at um, what else we uh, has been changing in the Visual Studio family. So uh, one other thing I'm going to mention very quickly is Visual Studio Mobile Center. This is not an IDE, but it's something you access through the browser. Uh, and this is really uh, our tagline here is this mission control for mobile apps. And this is bringing together a number of capabilities like Hockey App, Xamarin Test Cloud, uh, uh, the push uh, notifications uh, out onto mobile devices and more into a single uh, location so that you can really manage the life cycle of your mobile apps. Uh, and you just go to your browser, you'll go to the Visual Studio Mobile Center, create an app and manage it from there. Um, so it's bringing together a number of acquisitions and tools that uh, that can help from that. So um, what I'm going to do is let's let's move on from that and go and have a look at the um, uh, the, uh, the the lineup. So if we're looking at what was the lineup, um, what we've now got, if we pull those in to, to complete the set, um, is we've got Visual Studio IDE, Visual Studio for Mac, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Mobile Center, and Team Services or Team Foundation Server. So that's really the, the new lineup today. Um, so what I'm going to uh, look at next is, is what's new in the IDE itself. Um, so I've got a couple of slides, and then we'll do uh, a bit of a demo and show you some of those features. So obviously, I've had to cherry pick here from the point of view of time. But a few things, broad area that is definitely key is we wanted to put in a whole um, a whole skew of new productivity tools. Uh, and so there's a whole range of those. I'll, sh I'll give you a sense of some of them. But we wanted to improve your navigation within the within the tooling, uh, improve uh, the uh, the ability to refactor. There's a lot of new capabilities there. Uh, and we've also tried to improve things like debugging. So there's something new called run to click that I'll quickly show you in a minute. Uh, aside from productivity tools, um, another area that we wanted to put a lot of capabilities in um, is around code quality. Uh, and so I'll show you some of these as well. And we've introduced new features like live unit testing and live architectural rules. Um, so uh, what I want to do is go and show you those. So I'm going to start sharing my uh, desktop again. This time we'll be on uh, on Windows, uh, and uh, and what I'll do is uh, hopefully that started to stream across. Uh, so assuming you can see that, um, I hope uh, is that uh, uh, I'll start to take you through a few of these things. So this is Visual Studio 2017. It doesn't look very different actually. So there's no radical changes in the UI. Uh, and what I've got here is I've, I've just preloaded a solution. Uh, nothing particularly special about it. It's an ASP.NET um, uh, solution. Uh, so it's parts unlimited website. Uh, you can get a hold of this code actually. It's just up on GitHub. Um, and so I thought I'd use this to to uh, explain a few of the new uh, features. So first thing is I mentioned things like improved navigation. Um, there's a if you do Control T that will go into the menus. There's a new go to all option. Um, and so what I like about this is if I come in here and say, well, actually, I'm looking for um, something that starts with string, um, what you'll notice there is that I've got, uh, obviously, it's starting to match the text that I've entered. And then I'll see a list of potential options. 
Um, as I move between those, what it's doing is opening the relevant artifact in the temporary document well. Um, so I can see what I'm, you can see hopefully that it's changing what I'm looking at, but it's not opening these up as files. But if I do find something I'm, I actually want to open, if I either uh, click on that or, or press enter, it'll, it'll uh, open that up as a, a permanent entry in the document well. Um, so it's a nice way of being able to just start to move around, uh, but without necessarily littering your, your space with, uh, um, with new documents. You'll notice also you can filter down. Um, so you could filter just by types or members or uh, you know by by files that kind of thing. So there's a lot of control within this. Um, so Control T in this new go to all is 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 quite a good thing. Um, in a similar ma uh, manner, um, something else that I'd um, uh, probably highlight. Uh, let's just try and do it very simply. Is if I come in here and just say sort of this or something. Uh, in fact, let's go for uh, let's go for there we go, clean query. Um, you'll notice that IntelliSense has also got new filtering options. Um, so you can come in here. In fact, there are shortcuts for all of these. You can see it's Alt M for methods, Alt E for enums, that kind of thing. Um, so you can come in and, and filter down your list of IntelliSense using these filters. Um, so a much better way of, of narrowing down what you're seeing inside uh, inside IntelliSense. Um, there's a couple of other things. You can see obviously the supplies at each level. So again, I could filter down uh, if I'm looking at any, only want to see methods or extensions, etc. In here, um, a couple of other things. It handles capitalization better inside IntelliSense. And the other thing, this isn't a good example, but is what you should find is it will try and suggest the most likely options, not always just the um, those in alphabetical order. So you should see some improvements around IntelliSense as well generally uh, and some changes there. Um, something else that's been uh, sort of tidied up and improved is let's say, uh, well, let's go to the, the class here. Uh, and if I want to come in and say, um, uh, I want to go to find all references. Um, then what I can do uh, here, oops. Okay, let's go down here then actually, let's go into this method, um, is you'll see that the find all references um, has been uh, completely re-engineered really. So it's no longer a flat colorless list. Um, it's uh, it's sitting inside the uh, the, the the new search final references has got color. Um, if I hover over one of these references, you also get a tooltip showing you what the code is that's referencing. In this case, the method, um, and you can reorder these in a number of ways. So you can reorder by definition or project or, or whatever it might be. Um, so next thing I want to talk about, uh, I mentioned uh, run to click. So let's give you a, a quick example of that. So let's say that I'm interested in, in this search method. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in here, so nothing different about that. Uh, and then I'm just going to start uh, debugging, so nothing, uh, nothing new here. So I'm going to fire this application up, so I'll just do a quick build. Uh, and it'll fire up. This is a, a web app, so we'll just get the uh, the web app appearing in a second. Um, and what I'm going to do is obviously just do a search, uh, and it'll come back and break at the at the point uh, that's sitting in there. Just wait for that to load. Just wait for it to compile. Come on. There we go. So what I'm going to do is let's come in here. Actually, I'll use battery or something. That's fine. Um, so let's just go and search for that. And no surprise, I come back and break on the, the line where I've got a breakpoint. Um, what is new, though, what I wanted to show you quickly is as I hover over lines, you'll see that there's a new glyph, um, and that's the run to click option. And so you can choose to run to that point. So it's really like a, a revamped version of, of run to cursor. Uh, it allows you to run to the line that you want to, to select. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, the, the advantage here is it, it uh, avoids you having to put in lots of temporary breakpoints. So if you're starting to investigate this, this area of this method, rather than thinking, oh, do I need to go into that deep, deep pluralize or not? And where shall I put the breakpoints? What I can do is just say, actually, let, let's just run to, um, you know, let, let's run to uh, one of these lines. So let's come into here. And I'll run to click. So now we've debugged to this point. I can see the time that's elapsed. 
Um, it's just normal debugging, so I can go and see the values, look at the locals, all that kind of thing. Um, and I can also open up the performance metrics relevant to that point as well. Um, so I can start to dive into that information and see you know, what elapsed between those points. So um, be aware of that as you're debugging. You'll see that little glyph and, and what's sitting in there. So let's uh, let's just stop that uh, debug session. Um, the other couple of things I want to show you uh, very quickly uh, is that we've now added support for editor config. Um, and so uh, what I've done here is I've literally just added a new file called .editor config. Um, and this is a, a standard, um, or, or it's a sort of certainly an open standard that a lot of tools support, and now Visual Studio is supporting that. And I've got a very simple uh, a set of code styles in here. They can be a lot more complex. And uh, so all I've done here is said for C-sharp files, I want to use tabs, not spaces, and the indent size. Um, the, you can have nested uh, editor config. So this one is sitting at the top level. Um, I, in the solution, I could have editor configs for each project. Uh, and you can decide basically which one overwrites uh, which ones then. Um, so the advantage of this, again, is that rather than um, just having to set up individually your code styles, you can put your preferred code styles into a file, it goes into source control, and it lives with your solutions and projects. So it, it's picked up by default by anyone that's working on this project. Um, and the default behavior is that it overrides your personal code style settings um, inside uh, Visual Studio as well. So to give you a very simple example, if I go into Quick Launch and we say I want to uh, view uh, white space, for, for example. Let's turn that on. Uh, and let's go back into um, string contains product search. Let's just find a line where we've got spaces, so those dots there. And let's say I was going to come in here and I'll start typing. Because of that editor config, any new lines, I've now got tabs sitting in there, so we can see the, um, the tabs. Now, if I uh, come back out of this, um, so let's not worry about that. Uh, and I change this to space, uh, and we'll just um, we'll just save that. Uh, and I let's go and open that guy back up again, and do the same thing again. Uh, if I went in here and start typing, now we'll get we'll get spaces on there. And of course, I can apply the the, the style to everything um, by just doing Control K, Control D. I can apply the style to to every element in the solution or project. Uh, but I just think a nice way of sharing your code styles without having to individually go and set those up. So I'll just um, I'll turn off uh, the the white space because. And it's mildly irritating, but uh, we'll get rid of that again. But just so, just wanted to emphasize what that does. So be aware of the editor config as well. Um, there's loads of refactoring changes, so we're really building on the Roslyn stuff that's in there. Um, you'll see, I won't go through these because I want to move on to a couple of other things, but you'll see um, there's there's much better support for um, you know breaking classes out of you know, multiple classes out of one file, renaming files, uh, you know, uh, changing uh, methods to use interpolation, um, all sorts of stuff that's in there. There are language changes, so C Sharp now supports tuples, for example. Um, so there's a whole load of changes there. But what I want to do is just finish off with a couple of quick demos um, and the, uh, of some other capabilities. So the first thing is, um, if we go and look at this project, then I've got uh, a number of unit tests. I've got some Selenium tests here, but not too worried about those. Um, and, uh, and so you can see I've got some, some unit tests here. Uh, but what I want to do, and let's say we were working on this, um, this search method, for example, is maybe I'm interested in, in as I work on this, uh, how many of my unit tests are working, uh, and the code coverage, and which lines are those unit tests reaching. So what's new here is I'm going to go into the test menu, and I'm going to start live unit testing. Uh, and that starts it up in the background. It's all asynchronous, so you can carry on working. I could be moving around between files and doing stuff. Uh, but what we'll see in a second um, is that in the uh, sort of uh, inner gutter um, is we'll see some glyphs um, starting to appear. Um, so if I look at my search method here, what we can see is that I've got some lines that have got a dash, and so those aren't covered by any uh, tests. And I've got some lines that uh, here are red. In fact, I've got no green, I don't think. So what that's telling me um, is if I go to the, let's go to the, to, the, to the method, in fact, is that there are three tests that are covering this method. If I click on that, I can see that I've got uh, a green test, so I've got a passing test, and I've got two that are failing. If I look at those that are failing, then I can see the stack trace. 
uh, and I can see the um, the actual results coming through on those. Um, and so this is telling me obviously the the parcel failure and which lines are affected by which unit test. And the same is true as I go to each line of the code. Now, if I was to make a change, so if I was to look at this. Um, uh, and in fact, let, yeah, I can use this to navigate to my test as well. So let's say I, I select that. It'll take me into the unit test. Um, if I have a look at this, we can see we've got mixed case here. And so if I go back to the code, uh, it may well be, if we look at this, that yes, we're stripping off any plurals. Uh, and then what are we doing? We're looking to see whether or not it's, uh, we're passing that query into a link, uh, sorry, the string into a link query. Um, but maybe we're not handling uh, capitalization properly here. So what I'm going to do is let's try putting in um, to lower. Uh, and I'll just type that. And you'll see that I'm not doing anything else, uh, but as I type it, you'll see little clock icons are appearing. Um, and now those unit tests have been rerun, and I can see whether or not I fix them. Um, so in this case, if I go back to the same one that we looked at, we've still got three unit tests covering this method, uh, but now all three are passing. Um, and so as I, as I work on this, then, um, then they continuously get run. Um, so just, a, I think, a really nice way of working. Uh, it'll also support test-driven development. So if you start with your tests, uh, then you'll see that the tests are, are uh, initially failing anyway. And as you write the code, you'll see that the tests themselves turn green. So um, it'll work with either approach. Uh, and should you wish to, you can come back in and say, actually, I'd like to pause it, stop it, restart it. Uh, and there are options around always turn this on whenever you open a solution and so on. So the um, the last thing I want to show you um, is, um, let's just turn that off so we don't get distracted by it, um, is I want to very briefly show you the architectural dependency. Um, and this is something that's been around for a while, but has been revamped in, in 2017. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to come in here and create a new dependency validation diagram very quickly. I'll keep the default names. And what this allows me to do is to um, model uh, my uh, the layers or tiers or the um, the architecture within my application. And so I end up what I start with is a is a blank diagram. Uh, you can see that you can either start to draw your tiers using a toolbox, or you can drag and drop them in from from various views within uh, Visual Studio. I'm just going to use the um, the, the class view and I'm going to keep this simple and we're going to say I'm interested in the product search we've just been looking at, the view models um, and the controllers for example. And what I'm then going to do is set this up and say I'm going to have a dependency so that the controllers talk to or have a dependency on the view models um, but this is a unidirectional dependency so the view models don't talk to the controllers and similarly I've got a dependency from the controller to product search. Uh, which we were just looking at. So you can rearrange these as, as you see fit. Um, but this is all what this is giving us is the rules for my architecture, that the controllers talk to the view models, the controllers talk to product search, uh, and we're not allowing communication in other directions. So I'm going to save that. And the impact of this is if we go back into the code we're looking at, there's actually a to-do sitting up here. Uh, somebody has said, should we change this to, uh, to actually return a list of product view models? So let's say I didn't really think about it. I didn't understand the architecture. Um, and uh, sorry. And I come in here and say, change that to product view models. Um, I get a, a red squiggly line, an error, because I need to just add in the using. So we'll go and do that. That's fine. Uh, but actually, it doesn't go away. And so if I go back in there, I'm now getting an error because this method should not directly or indirectly reference product view model. Uh, because of those layers and the dependencies in them. So what we're doing here is giving you live architectural enforcement of rules. So somebody can set those rules in the diagrams, and then anybody else will pick these up. Um, they'll be shown live as you use them. If I look in the error list, then this is the dependency validation errors. So this is DV1. And that's giving me that information. Um, and the way we're doing this live, uh, if you're interested, is again using Roslyn. So when you add those diagrams in, what we're doing is adding in, if I go into the analyzers, we've added in the Microsoft dependency validation analyzers. Um, and that's using Roslyn to bring this back live. So again, I think a very powerful way of saying, you know, let's define our architecture, and there's, you can make this much prettier and, and more complex. Um, and then as people are, are literally typing, we can say, no, you shouldn't be doing that. That's, that's breaking our rules. So uh, I think I've probably gone over time, actually. So I will, uh, I'll stop there. So what I'll do is I'll stop uh, sharing my screen. So let's just stop that. 
uh, go back in there and my uh, my final um, slide uh, hopefully is just ho is um, a summary is just to say uh, there's a lot more there's loads and loads and loads I haven't covered um, but hopefully that just gives you a sense of some of the changes we're making inside um, inside Visual Studio uh, in both in introducing new versions like Visual Studio for Mac but also in the improvements inside the um, the IDE itself so what I'll do, I'm going to hand over to uh, Mo, um, who's going to take us through the other areas, and I'll uh, go and have a look at things like the, the questions, if there are any, uh, and if I can, I'll, I'll answer any of those as we go along. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you, Joel, uh, for uh, presenting that, and I want to welcome everyone for attending our webinar today. And um, yes, I'm, I'm Mohammed uh, Radwan, I'm a Visual Studio LM MVP and DevOps practice lead at this house as Mel introduced me. So I'm continuing on what, uh, what Joel introduced. Uh, mostly we will go through uh, some points about let's go to our agenda. So I'm going to more deep details uh, talking about Visual Studio Code and we will going to see demo about that then we will going to see the new feature uh, with uh, DevOps and continuous delivery which is introduced with uh, Visual Studio 2017 and then I will highlight the main uh, feature which with TFS 2017 update one then we will go into question and answers after that Okay, so continue on details for what uh, already Jill introduced, uh, part of the Visual Studio family that uh, now we have the Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is um, just uh, a lightweight editor, which is downloaded, as Jill uh, mentioned, with more than one million developers active now. So it's lightweight uh, code editor or IDE, which is cross-platform, so you can install the Visual Studio Code of Mac or Linux or Windows, and it supports uh, different features like IntelliSense, Debug, Git. Uh, so it's, it's, it has a big uh, marketplace. It starts uh, growing up by time. Uh, so if, for example, getting a look at the marketplace, we can have different extensions for the C-sharp, for Python, for icons, uh, different extension we can see that. And again, the marketplace, you can develop your own extension, you can deploy that to the marketplace to support uh, languages or intelligence or, uh, or different theme or colors for the IDE. So let's go for a demo about Visual Studio Code. And in this demo, I'm going to show you how very easily and quickly you can install Visual Studio Code and how we can go through different uh, you know, parts of the IDE, installing different extension, and how to create a project and run that with very easy steps. So let's just installing the Visual Studio Code. As we can see, just very straightforward and very lightweight. Once we installed it, just like just loaded. So I just open the folder and start to create a new folder uh, to hold all my projects. This will be my main folders for all my projects. Then selecting that folder, which will load the Visual Studio Code again with this folder. Then going to the extensions or marketplace, installing the C Sharp extension. Then reload that, which will reopen or reload the Visual Studio Code with the C Sharp extension loaded. I can go here, going for um, extension online, so I can install another extension or maybe go here for loading um, the installed extension, disable what I extension I installed, or maybe reload again. So it's pretty straightforward to, to manage extension, which again, it's, it's the main idea to support the, the C-sharp, the intelligence, intelligence, and so on. So if I go here and start open the, my folder, start creating a new folder for a new project, here I will name my project, which will hold my project file. Let's start reloading again to that folder. 
and then open the terminal window then start typing .NET a new it could be the type of the project MVC or console in this example I will show you how to create a console application so I will type console this will create required file for, for the console application and as we can see it's just simply file with hello world example just very simple and it loaded what needs to all the references and um, all the file needed to work with the debug mode and so on. So very easy we can see that. Let's go for the terminal again. So I can run this application and just go for the terminal and start type .NET run, which will run my application. And as we can see, the hello world is just typed. That's it. I can also go for the navigation, start open the debug mode, and the same, I can put my breakpoint, just to start run the debug. This will load the, the app or the application in the debug mode, which highlighted the breakpoint. Then I can go from the navigation to step over or step into, you know, the same experience with the Visual Studio about going to the debug. So it's again, it's straightforward, you know, debugging mode. So a lot of extension with, with the Visual Studio code that could be a GitHub extension, uh, the VSCS extension. Again, a lot of extension support is for the marketplace. And we, we, you know, we give that for the community and we hope that it will be grow up with time. And again, it's cross platform. You can install that on Mac, on Linux or Windows, whatever. And this, of course it's free of charge. Uh, so no code for that. Okay. So one of the, the main feature Microsoft team trying to is enhancing and give uh, more feature for the continuous delivery and DevOps ecosystem. So one of these feature uh, was um, the continuous delivery tool for Visual Studio 2017, which is developed by Microsoft Dev Labs. So it's part of Microsoft, but it is for uh, not supported. So it's just like it's deployed to the marketplace and you can just download that and use that, but it's not, it's out of support because it's just uh, for, for extension for the Visual Studio. So the main idea of the continuous delivery tool is just to give you more option for continuous integration and continuous delivery. I'm going to show you a demo about how we can use that and uh, configure that, uh, how automatic, automatically we'll create a build, a release, and run that uh, in the background and also deploy that, that to the Azure or the cloud for, for development. First, I would like to take you to show you the, one of the good features I like it is to install Visual Studio side by side edition. So, as we can see, I install Visual Studio Enterprise and I can install another Visual Studio. Um, so, for example, when I have this nickname, because this feature, I really like it. So, I can, for example, type Pro, then I can have different edition on my computer for Visual Studio, and then I can open different Visual Studio Pro edition on my computer. Okay, let's go for uh, the Visual Studio uh, Continuous Delivery Tool. So, open the Visual Studio Enterprise, and then going for Tools, Extension, going online and I was just searching for the extension so here I will type continuous and then this will load all the extension and here are my extension continuous delivery tools download I need to close the visual studio to load the extension and continue the installation now it's completed just relaunch the Visual Studio again. So let's first create a new team project on Visual Studio Team Service. So I will just connect to my Visual Studio. Usually I prefer to go through the demo walkthrough so we can get more experience. So I need to log into my account with VSCS. And when I log into my account, it would load up all, just type my password, just loads all my Visual Studio accounts. So I'm going for my account, test the house 
main let's go for that one yes and here all the project under this account i can open any project because i will actually create a new project so i will just click here and just create a new project so this will load the, the web page and click on new and then just naming my project i will name visual studio 2017. I prefer Scrum. This is just uh, personal preferences for the workflow. Getting back here and start loading my VSTS Visual Studio 2019. So opening the account again, navigating to this house Visual Studio account and open my new project. So now it's load my VSTS project with Git repository. So Let's first clone my repository to local my machine. So this again will for my password because this is Windows Server 2016 machine with more security enabled. Now I cloned my repository to locally, then I will just go create a new application. So just to get back again for the Team Explorer. And from here, I will create a new application. I will just create a simple web application I prefer MVC, again, it's personal preferences. So very small application, just like. Then I will just commit this a change locally on my repository. Now it's committed. And then just push this change to the VSTS. So just push the change. So once it pushed to the TFS, the VSTS, then I just, I prefer to click sync. This is how I used to do that to make sure that I, I got the latest from all sides. Then let's open the code on the VSTS page. Yes, yeah, so the code now is on the cloud. And then getting back to my extension, I start to configuring that. So as we can see that this will automatically load the, the, my repository and start to also load the app service and my Azure account because I log in that. So let's open my Azure account and see all, this is the resource groups I, I, I have right now. I have four resource groups. And then let's click OK. And this, we will create, the first step is create a resource group, which is called Visual Studio 2017 demo, as we can see. So if we get back to Azure, my Azure account, we load that, we load that. We will find that I have a new resource group created. So getting back to the Visual Studio. Yes, I have here a little error because it's the unique name, so I need to pick a better name for to make sure it's unique because this is a subdomain under Azure. So let's edit that and put a unique name. So I will go for the app service and click edit. This will edit the configuration here on Azure. So here I will put the name 2017. I don't want to create a new resource group. I, I want to deploy to the same resource group. So I will select resource group we created earlier, and then just click OK. So again, of course, this will not create a resource group, but this will create the, the web app or app service on Azure on the cloud. As we can see, it's created. So if we click on this resource group, navigate, we, we see that the web app created successfully and no problem. So if we go to my VSTS project and click on build, it's not yet, so let's go to the Visual Studio and see the notification area. You can see here there is a notification to show me that there is something created on the VSTS, which is create the CI and CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Let's refresh again. Yes, as we can see here, this is a build created and it's, and also in, in running. So this is running, waiting for the host. If we go for release, the release also definition created. The build is still in progress. 
again, the build definition created and the trigger the build as well and the release created and waited for the build. So now we navigate to the release. As we can see, the release mm -hmm. with more information, the release in progress. So let's go for the web app to see the URL to see. So if I open the URL, we can see it's an MBT website on Azure. So if I go back, let's refresh that page. Now it succeeded, completed the deployment. Let's refresh this page. And it's deployed the web application. So it's very easily to make a continuous delivery to the cloud. So let's make a small change just to show you how even the change is very easily to, to, to deploy that change to the cloud or the DSTS very quickly using a continuous delivery extensions. So I will just edit this page and just write welcome to Visual Studio 2017. Just see if the change pushes the change, but first I need to commit that change to my local repository. So just commit that and pushing that to the cloud. BSDS. Now successfully, and again, this will automatically trigger the build and release as we showed before. So again, the build in progress. Waiting for, for the host agent. Building the application. Once the application is built and the bits is ready, then the release definition bits is built and to start deploying to the cloud on Azure Web Services uh, web application. Go for the details, still in progress. Just go for to refresh, yes, it's completed. And if we refresh the URL, of, so it's very easy as we can see that. Also, the, let's go to show you that there is also notification, so I can turn on the notification for, for the, the build I want to work with. And with this notification, I can navigate to the build result so I can see this build and see what is the status of this build and more information about that. Also, one of the good parts that this extension supporting the error so I can understand that. So let me make an error for, for the code and see the, how we can support that during the notification. I will just put anything to make error, so I will put, just put my name. And again, just see if this commits a change local. Push that to BSTS. And again, this will trigger the continuous integration build and then continuous uh, deployment release definition. Just wait for the error. Yes, as we can see, we, we got the error that uh, the build is failed. And if I open that, I can navigate very quickly and very easily about the build and see uh, the status fail. I can go more details about why the fail happened and so on. So again, it's a it's an perfect extension for, for supporting a very fast continuous delivery pipeline created on the Visual Studio 2017 to deploy your application to the cloud. Okay, so part of our talking today is to introduce TSS 2017 update one. So actually, um, I saw that also it's a good idea because uh, a lot of people and our customer, sometimes they are confused about um, if TSS 2017 win release. So to 2000, uh, TSS 2017 released in November 2016. And the update one just released with Visual Studio 2017 and 7th of March in, in uh, this month, uh, in this year. So, and actually update one, uh, including uh, the last three sprint, which is 110, 11, and 12, uh, we still have, uh, we still have two sprint, which is uh, 113 and 14. It will come for the next TFS 2017 update one, but it's not yet, uh, okay. So the first thing I want to 
I would like to explain the path to upgrade. So here it's very important to, if you want to upgrade for TFS 2017, either 2017 or 2017 update one, it is the same. And we need to understand that again, 2017 update one, it is including both of them. So if you need to install 2017 update one, you don't need to install 2017 and then installing update one. You just install TFS 2017 update one. So here it's based where you are coming from. So as we can see, if you are coming from TFS 2012, 13, 15, you go directly for TFS 2017 or 2017 update one. But if, if you're coming from TFS 2010, you need first to go to TFS 2013, then TFS 2017. And the same for 2008, you need to go for 12 first and then going directly for TFS 2017. And for 2005, you need 10 first and then 13, then 17. So this is the upgrade for 2017 or 2017 update one. So the main highlight I would like to explain here for, for first the new TFS. Again, as, as Jill explained, a lot of bunch of, of new feature and improvement, we, we can't have that all in there. So here I, I just highlighted the main, uh, I will not say the main feature, well, but I will say the main areas where uh, there is improvement for the visual studio uh, for the TFS 2017 first. So we have in 2017, we have the code search. Now you can search you inside your code with, with different criteria and with, with a quick way. Uh, and it's part of the installation of the TFS 2017. We have also the package management. As part of the TFS 2017, you can post your, your, your package management and instead of having another NuGet package. And the good part is that you can use that for, for using the same uh, uh, administration, uh, interfaces the same admin account so you don't need to have an overhead over managing this administration. A lot of improvement for Agile and Dashboard. There is again a lot of improvement for Git uh, with pull request feature, different uh, enhancement for the pull request and so on. Uh, for the build I also will release uh, test improvement as well. So market at the uh, marketplace administration. Again a lot of bunch of new feature introduced in TFS 2017. So if we go for 2017 update one, again, it's part of that enhancing the new feature which is introduced in TFS 2017 and also come with a new feature and with bug fixes for, for that. So again, we have like, for example, we have a more personal experience. We have, again, for me, because we thought that it's really, we don't have time to introduce again, even with each area, we have a bunch of features under each area. So this is why if you really like to, to, to watch another uh, webinar, we, we can just send for, for mail uh, that you would like to, to hear that. And we can prepare another webinar that goes through part of that or, you know, because again, it's to cover all this feature, we really need, uh, you know, a long time to cover that. So. I'm just trying to highlight the main uh, updates here. So as we can see, more personal experience. Now we have a personal page when you log into the PSDS, you have your own page, a collection page, which you can manage all your pull requests, your work items. So it gives you a personal way to manage all your work. Version control improvement. For example, now in, in Git, there is a lot of uh, administration improvements. For example, a small um, general, uh, administration and instead of having a bulk of, of admin you can also now import from github to be sds very easy or, or gitlab or different git servers so a lot of improvement also in in in, in the version control uh, for for the build as well for the buy, for the payment for the required for package management now you can sub support payment for package management so again and package improvement uh, so cross-platform test improvement. There is a test impact analysis now to support more uh, comparing for your, your code. So the code search, which is introduced in TFS 2017, there is update to enhance the feature as well. So again, a lot of uh, feature, uh, for example, team room duplica duplication. So don't use, use team room again. There is a lot of feature uh, for, for, for example, you can integrate with Slack, for example, uh, very easily instead of using so team room don't use team room again it was uh, it is deprecated now so again a lot of feature for TFS 2 uh, 2017 and 2017 update one 
we we will be happy to to receive your request if you really want to webinar that we go through part of that or we we, we would be happy to do that so i'm going to give mel now to um, uh, you know the question and the answer so Thank you very much, Mo, Giles. Um, loads of demos there. Really interesting stuff from um, the launch of Visual Studio 27. So, as, as Mo mentioned, we're now taking questions. We'll, I think, we're we'll just take a few. We're we're nearly sort of nearly an hour uh, past an, past the hour. So we'll take a few questions. If you can type in some of your questions there, and if you really want to ask a deep dive sort of questions to Giles and Mo, please do so at your um, attendee chat on your screen. Perfect. So we have. We have quite a few questions coming up. Um, uh, let's let's start on the question uh, session. So the first question is: Do I need Visual Studio Enterprise to pick up to pick up architectural dependency validation errors? Uh, Giles, I think that is you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Uh, yes, uh, so it's a good question. So the yeah the answer to that is that you need Enterprise to create the architecture diagram that I showed you. So to be able to create those dependencies, you do. But to pick up the errors, um, you can be in any version of Visual Studio, so community upwards. So you could have somebody creating the rules with Enterprise and everyone else picking those up. So it's uh, that, that, that's the position on that one. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Giles. I've got another question. So the next question is: Does continuous delivery tool support TFS 2017? And also, does continuous delivery tool support TFS v6? I think that is with that is you, Mo. Yes, also this is also part of uh, the good question because um, this is an early version of this extension. So right now it's only supporting uh, Git and also uh, it's not supporting TFS uh, 2017 or even 2017 update one. But we're expecting this coming, uh, you know, this is just as a start and we're expecting Microsoft to add more features for, for, for that part. Thank you, Mo. I've got next question here. Does live unit testing support test-driven development or TDD? I think, Giles, that's you. Yeah, actually, I did very briefly mention that, but yes, it's um, just I'm very conscious. One of the things when you look at the live unit testing is the natural focus is on, well, I've got code. Is it covered by unit tests? Um, but it can support uh, a TDD approach as well, um, so test-driven development. So you can create your unit tests in, in the same way that you always would in Visual Studio. So um, start writing the unit test. You can just do control dot, the quick actions, to create the classes and methods. Um, and uh, well, all that happen is live unit testing will work with those perfectly well, um, and your unit tests will first of all be failing. Um, you can write as many unit tests as you want, and then almost gamify it. So um, you can then go into your the, the, just the scaffolded out code um, and start implementing it. And as you start implementing it, you'll see the unit tests starting to turn green. Um, so absolutely, it'll support a, a TDD approach as well. Thank you, Giles. Uh, I've got the next question. We'll just take a couple more and then we'll wrap up the presentation for today. Next question is, does TFS 2017 support SQL Server 2012? Okay, so uh, no, uh, actually uh, TFS 2017, starting from TFS 2017, you need to have at least SQL Server 2014. And this is very important. With 2016, you need at least uh, Service Pack 1. So you, you can't even work with TFS 2017 with SQL Server 2016 without uh, Service Pack 1. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. We'll take the last question for today. Um, bear with me, the question is quite long. How does that editor config interact with personal code style settings in Visual Studio? Charles? Yeah, so the uh, the default set of behavior there actually is that the um, the editor config files that I showed you uh, take precedence. And so I think that's probably the right behavior that, uh, in other words, as you open up a solution or a project that has editor config files in them, um, because those, are, those travel with the solution or the project, they take precedence over your personal settings inside the IDE. So uh, I think that's 
probably the right way around as a default. Uh, that means that you will see and uh, any changes you make will comply with the code style settings in the editor config, i.e. The, the same settings that everyone that accesses that project solution will see. So yeah, they, they have precedence, basically. Thank you so much, John. Then that concludes our Q&A session uh, for this afternoon. Um, again, the recording will be available uh, with you guys. We'll be sent to you automatically by uh, hopefully latest Monday. So before we go, again, any further questions that you would like to ask Giles or uh, Mohammed, please do email them. The contact details are on your screen right now. If you would like to see more of the features of Visual Studio 27, or maybe deep dive on some of the demos that we've shown you briefly today, again, please do email us or contact us. Um, without further delay, um, I thank you, Giles and Mohammed, for, for today's presentation. And I thank you guys for joining us this afternoon and hope to see you again at our next live session. Thank you.